the cast of Supermodel in the building. <laughs> the young, the talented, the fabulous cast of Supermodel. It premiered for the first time in Kenya yesterday with great reviews. And before this, it premiered on February 18th in the Berlin Film Festival, where it was met with even bigger reviews. Hey everyone, my name is Likarion Wenaina. Mm -hmm. I am the director of the film and also the story creator. Right. Um, so what Supermodel is? Supermodel is um, two words, super and bodo. Modo means someone mm -hmm. or person in Kikuyu. Right. So it roughly translates, roughly, I don't say because of legal concerns, roughly translates to Superman. Right. Okay. Or superhuman. Yes. So it's just a story about a, li uh, a nine-year-old nine girl with terminal illness who mm -hmm. thinks, you know, she dreams of being a superhero, dreams of being a star, and the entire village and her entire family don't know what to do with that because she has two months to live and they try to figure that out. So, Mimi, I'm Johnson Fish Chege. I play the role of Mike the VJ. Okay. okay. Yes. All right. Uh, My name is Chantel Washake. Mm -hmm. I was the locations manager on Supermodel. Okay. Nice. Hi. My name is Neha Manoj, and I was the production designer for Supermodel. What was the casting like, especially for the actor? Mm. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> this is where we <laughs> lie. <laughs> you do your thing, man. Uh, personally, I didn't. Uh, you audition? didn't audition? Audition. Superstar. Look at this. Yeah. Yeah. You're just a one take wonder. Uh, director. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. So, the moment someone suggested Fish and I'd seen all the work he's done, I was like, I needed someone um, loud, someone uh, from theatre. Right. It had to be from theatre because Mike uses a lot of his body, a lot of his voice. So it was an automatic. Like I told the cast and director, Fish has to, to do this. I don't see anyone else to do. Right. For the rest of the cast, it was really tricky, especially for our lead lead role, mm -hmm. uh, the little girl. Yeah. We auditioned about 500 kids. Wow. That must have been hard because kids How do you are say difficult no to, to work children? With. How do you tell a parent? Because they're not good, they're not good. Child, I mean, I don't <laughs> think your child is no good. But no, it's, not, it's not no good, you know, because uh -huh. when we audition about 300 boys first, because right. the role was supposed to be uh, a boy. I'm sorry. So one day, sitting in the office watching audition tapes, and I was like, you know what? It would be so funny <laughs> if we cast a girl because we were hearing how the girls were really good at acting. And there's something about, you know, saying something to the universe and then you hear it back. You're mm -hmm. like, why didn't we think of this in the first place? And mm -hmm. it was about two and a half weeks to production. So costume designs have already done costumes for the boy. The, the, uh, his room is already made as a boy. And we decided to do you know, make it a girl. Right, right. And it just made sense. And it still fit our story. So what we did in two and a half weeks, we changed the entire world of our film. And we made it a world where gender didn't matter. Mm -hmm. And if you see, like, the costume she's wearing, she, she doesn't necessarily have to wear dress she still looks up to movies like jackie chan and wants to right, be a superhero yeah. and so we did not conform her to what society thinks and we got a, a chance to even make a deeper film than before when you're creating this film you will go as far as that deep into the wardrobe before you found who you're looking for of course yes. is that how it works y yeah. yes you have to find that magic person you know yeah. however long it takes sometimes you'll find what if the I magic agree. person is so many sizes more than what you had created for you then that's work. that's a risk now you have to take <laughs> of, of obviously the producers want as light as this they want laughing like oh Likar, you haven't cast anyone in two weeks ah, it's all right <laughs> no 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 they nearly killed me but uh, they also understood we needed to get the right person and the moment we got Stacy, uh, we talked for like three minutes. She didn't even audition at first. Just wow. talking with her in the hallway, her hearing how mature it, uh, she is, I just told everyone she's going to it's be Joe. They're like, no, let's yeah. audition everyone. I was like, no, <laughs> it's okay, let's audition. But I'm telling you, she's yeah. the one. Right. And it ended up her being the one and it worked out. Wow. I, mean, I was telling you earlier that I studied theatre and film, but I never expected to come back to Kenya and there would actually be quality being put out. So it's so nice to see, especially with a young cast, that you can actually put out great quality. What is it like coming back from such great highs into Kenyan industry? Do you get jobs really easily? What's it like? I, I don't know how to answer that because I'm still Truthfully. looking for jobs. And I don't want so, to... to you don't uh, want to sound negative. Yeah, but to be honest, really nothing has changed, unfortunately. You God. know, uh, you do something amazing. Um, it premieres in another country, in one of the top festivals. Actually, in two of the top festivals mm -hmm. in the world, Berlin and Toronto. And you come back home and you still have to knock on doors. You know, you still have to go, hey guys, I'm around. So you throw me like a gig. You know, it's it sounds cheesy, but it's it's a it's a fact of life. You know, right. some we there are no systems in place that are perfect to celebrate and appreciate uh, 
our our own mm-hmm. in terms of the film industry we have government officials doing Madness. things they shouldn't be doing i'm not going to mention anyone more to <laughs> but uh, you know <laughs> but theft. exactly but you know you 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 don't complain you just work hard and hopefully it's always that one job that will you hope will you know, catapult you into the right places if it, so what can you do as a kenyan film right in the kenyan industry to get the kenyan people to view your movie okay maybe not to the 1.2 billion dollar extent necessarily yeah. and if possible let's go and let's surpass that but what can you what, what would be your idea to get the kenyans to come and view your movie um i think it's exactly what we're trying to do right now uh the producers of the film picked this story because it's weird mm-hmm. you know it's something new it's that's the only way you can grab the audience's attention because unfortunately uh the audience doesn't have any trust in us you mm-hmm. know we can't blame them we haven't really been delivering consistency consistency is the biggest problem we have because if people knew every single year we're doing a movie then they probably plan with that if every year right. we're doing two they would but unfortunately <laughs> systems are not apl- in place you know money is not always around <laughs> so you do a movie today then the next time you get a money it's right. like in two three years mm-hmm. but i think if we got more corporates involved more money from within mm-hmm. then we'll mm-hmm. be doing more films on a regular basis and that would build trust with the audience why do you think it is a kenyan arm being fund like kenyans are not funding their own well i think it's because um they don't believe in arts and and culture they don't mm-hmm. if you see just how we're being treated as a, a ministry you know uh film is now in sports in the ministry of sports and heritage right right i yeah. don't know if you should move our offices to bombas of kenya cause, even they're not getting paid you know, man i'm like heritage <laughs> yeah and and they don't know the power of film right. but exactly. governments around the world mm-hmm. know the power of film they know how influential mm-hmm. it can be mm-hmm. they know that this is the only way we can lock down our culture this right. is the only way our kids will remember us they won't remember us by how the stories we tell you know even our moms tell us we used to walk from here to kajiado to get water but if they we could have that in movies mm-hmm. then generations to come will watch that yeah. and know where they've come from so what are the steps that you are taking um okay so first and foremost is um writing unique movies mm-hmm. movies at uh I, i don't believe in a kenyan story or an american mm-hmm. story i believe there's only a human story and you wrap it around a culture. Right. So if people see their own culture being portrayed in a positive way, you know. That's why Supermod is not a movie about poverty or corruption or crime. It's mm-hmm. something unique, something people haven't seen before, and that's what um steps uh, makes us stand out at first you know and makes people more intrigued mm-hmm. and number and number two is just going hard in terms of marketing supermodo cast <laughs> have been hang out with us thank you so much i believe that your story is powerful not only from from atiflom from listening to you but um just you know i can feel the spirit i can feel the vibrations and congratulations um mm-hmm. finally so guys um supermodo will be screening in cinemas after the Nairobi Film Festival. So it'll be in two cinemas, Prestige Cinema and Westgate. Uh you can check the timings. Um it's starting from the 30th of March till the 5th of April. Please check online um for the cinemas for the timings. Nice. Yeah. So guys, let's go out and numbers tell your friend to tell a friend to tell another friend.